Hi, this is Megan with Beataholic, and today I'm going to show you how to make a basic two-color paracord bracelet with a plastic buckle. And it's going to be just the very simple basic version. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the most basic simple one. So a few things when you're working on this. You'll need a uh, basic disposable lighter. Uh, don't use a micro torch for this. It'll burn right through, burn up your nylon cord. You do want just a, your basic disposable cheap lighter. You can also, it's really handy, you can use the side of the lighter where it's smooth to smooth out your ends when you're finishing off the bracelet, which will get the lighter kind of funky. So just use the cheap little disposables and then you will need your parachute cord or paracord. This is a two color project like this one. So I'm using two lengths, one of each color. And then you're gonna need these little plastic buckles. And this is the, the 0.6 inch. So six tenths of an inch is the size. And this is the perfect size for doing a basically like the two strand core with the two strands on the outside. So your super basic one is gonna fit perfectly on the 0.6. You need something pretty strong to cut through the paracord. I'm using flush cutters because I found that my little scissors were a little wimpy. If you have stronger, bigger scissors, it might work fine. When you are cutting your paracord, you're going to want to cut about a foot of paracord for each inch of knotting that you want. And as far as how much knotting you'll want, your clasp, this buckle, will add about two inches when it's closed from here to here. And then you also, because it's thicker, you want to add about an inch to your desired measurement from your what your wrist measurement is. So my wrist is about six inches. I wanted my bracelet to be seven inches, which means I only want five inches of knotting from clasp to clasp because then plus the two for the clasp gives me seven inches and it fits nice and snug. I went ahead and cut six foot lengths of my paracord just to give myself a little bit of extra working cord. So one thing that you'll need to know how to do is how to join two of the cords together. The first thing that you're gonna do is take your buckle and separate it. So these will go through the top edge of the male half of your buckle. So take one of your short cords, your center cords, and pull it a little longer. And you're going to give yourself a little bit of a tail Bring it through the female end of the buckle. Don't pull it all the way out and tie a lark's head knot by just pulling the ends through the loop. And just pull the other buckle and the other string and everything all the way through. And pull that tight to attach it. You're gonna take your cords and what we're gonna do is we want to attach this end of this cord to this tail on this one so that we have one piece so that you get your two color core piece going up the middle now there are a couple of different ways to attach your cords to fuse them together you can just trim both ends heat them with a lighter and try to smoosh them together I like to kind of make a male and female fit together kind of a joint so trim down this tail here. We want this join to be close to the buckle and it is gonna take a little bit of it to do the join and you do want the join to be high up enough inside the knotting that it is encased in the knotting to make it strong. So give yourself about an inch and a half or so, an inch and a quarter and trim that down. So you're gonna pull down 
the outside of your uh, cord and have the core threads exposed. And cut off about three quarters of an inch. And then you're gonna pull your cord back up. And now you want the end that's going in there to be a clean end. And it helps if you have it already fused a little to itself. So you just hold it in the flame and you'll see it get dark and shiny. You can see it melt and when it starts to melt, then you can kind of push it against the side of the lighter. Be careful when you have it melted because that will burn you if you touch it. It is very hot. So make sure you let it cool off before you touch it. And now you have this piece here and it's hard, so it will be easier to settle it in. So you can see that the top here is hollow because we cut out the core threads. So you can take this piece and kind of twist it and shove it into the top here. And if these ends get frayed, that's fine because when you fuse it, it will just give it more to fuse onto. So now you're gonna take that join. Be careful not to get stray cords in front of the flame when you're doing this, because they will get melty and get ruined. So just turn the join and fuse it together. And don't melt it to the point that you're gonna melt right through it. Just get a good solid fuse on it so that those are really solidly connected. All right, so next you're going to finish, uh, decide the length this way. So as I said, you want your bracelet to be an inch longer than your wrist measurement and your clasp adds two inches. So I'm just going to use this one as a guide since I already did that one and I know it fits me for my seven inch bracelet. I know I want the middle from the end to the end from where the plastic stops to where this plastic stops to be a, about five inches. Okay. Now the basic knot in a, the super basic paracord bracelet is a macrame square knot. It's also in paracord called a cobra but it is the same thing as a macrame square knot. So I have showed you how to do that in a video before. I'll go over it again here. I'm going to take your cord. It is a little tricky to work with six foot pieces, but you get used to it. So you're going to take your left strand, bring it over the center strands, take your right strand, bring it over the tail of the left strand and then bring it behind and up through the loop and then pull both sides tight. And then you're going to do the opposite. So you're going to take your left strand and go under the center Take the right strand under the left and then bring it over and through the loop. Again, it's gonna be left over, right over, under and through. left under, right under, over and through. And I always like to think of it as just over, over, under, through. And then under, under, over, through. If you make sure that you alternate them, you will get a nice 
flat piece. If you don't alternate them, it will twist. So if you see it starting to twist and you don't have the same color down the sides, you're forgetting to alternate. So again, it's over, over, under, through, under, under, over, through. And you're just going to keep doing that until you get to the end here. So, when you get all the way down to your other clasp, you're done. And you can see that it depends a lot on how tight you do your knotting and everything. You will have extra cord and you can do smaller projects like keychains and stuff with your scraps, but as you work, you'll get more of a feel for how long you need to cut your cords per how many inches. So. As you can see, you, I did six feet for five inches. If I'd have done five feet for five inches, I'd still have a couple of feet left over. So it's kind of a guessing game because it, a lot of it has to do with the, the tension. If you use uh, looser, then you will use less cord. If you do your knotting tighter, you will use more cord. So pull your last knot really nice and tight. Then you're going to cut off the extra, which is why you not want that knot tight. Leave yourself just a little bit of cord, maybe an eighth of an inch there, or just slightly longer. Okay, then the way you finish this is the same way that you fuse it. You're going to melt it. And this is when you're going to use the side of the lighter. So you're going to light the lighter and you're going to hold it to the end of your cord and you're going to let it melt until the whole extra tip, that whole eighth of an inch that you cut looks like it's melty. And then really quickly, you're going to squish it with the edge of the lighter. So you can see what this does, it's going to expand the end and it's going to fuse to the edges around here. The idea being it's only secure if it doesn't pop back through that knot right there. So if by making it bigger and by fusing it to the edges around here, it's going to keep it secure and keep it from popping through there. And like I said, you will get goo on your lighter. Just wait till it's cooled off all the way and you can scratch some of it off. But that's why you don't use grandpa's Zippo from World War II. Okay, so once more, hold it on there, let it get all melty, and then smooth it out. And if you don't get it all nice and smooth the first time, you can reheat it and go back and smooth it out. Just be careful if you've had the lighter lit for a little bit, then the part that you push to light it does get very hot. You might need to let it cool off. Don't burn your thumb. All right, so once you have the ends all nice and sealed and it's not going anywhere, then that is your finished bracelet. It's really simple and once you get it down, it is really quick too.